joining in for our next installment of the Celerity Live uh, community discussion series. Uh, just noticed I didn't have my video on, so I'll turn it on in a minute. But we have some great guests today uh, from an industry that is very near and dear to my heart. Uh, I, lo I love uh, to have a bourbon at the end of the day that's, that's kind of helped uh, with all of this. And I have enjoyed watching a wonderful um, production that uh, uh, our main guest, Tim uh, and Hillary, have put together. Uh, and we'll talk more about that as we go through. But I want to throw it to Bud today to go ahead and introduce our special guests, and then we'll get right into the presentation. Thank you, Bert. And we're super glad to have uh, Tim, Niddle, and Hillary Bauman with us today, who are very well respected in their fields. Tim and uh, Celerity, we've partnered together on some of the destination classes, and Tim is a consummate professional. He has been in business for uh, a period of time and has deep roots in the bourbon industry, starting out with Woodford Reserve in 2009. And he has grown his uh, experience and his practice in the bourbon industry over a period of time. He's a certified Stave and Thief Society Executive Bourbon Steward, works with the Kentucky Castle. He is a professor at Midway University where he helped develop a curriculum to educate other distillers. He also gives an incredibly great tasting experience. And uh, you'll hear a little bit more about some ways he's innovated to make that happen. We're also delighted to have uh, Hilary Bauman with us, the owner of Fascination Design. She provides branding, design, development, communications for print, web, social media, and has uh, developed projects for organizations like the National Corvette Museum. You know, Campaigns that really make make you go, right? They're, they're sporty, make you go. I developed a logo that was used by GM and it works with other clients across the U.S. So again, super glad to have you with us today. Looking forward to hearing your perspective on the new normal. Thank you very much, Bud. We're going to uh, get started here. And I just want to let every, you know, remind everybody that we are talking about how do we transform remote work? And it's been really fun to work with uh, uh, Tim and Hillary because their presentation is going to talk about all, every aspect that we have on this continuum that we have uh, explored the last three weeks. Everything from conquering dysfunction to transforming how operation can occur. And this is particularly about professional presentations because everybody's trying to step into that. And I really think that Tim and Hillary are leading the pack in great uh, great examples of how this can mature and how, uh, how companies and individuals can gain voices uh, at a different level than we've had. So without further ado, I'm going to turn this over to, to Tim and he can start with how he, he and uh, Hillary conquered dysfunction. Well, I think that uh, you're talking about leading the pack. We saw the dysfunction coming very quickly and very highly disruptive for my business. Um, we, uh, my business primarily does bourbon education, the bourbon country, um, in-person tastings, private experiences, that kind of thing. We also do some consulting and some other things, but a big cornerstone is the event. Um, and March 14th was an event that we debated whether or not we were going to do. We pivoted some things with a more, um, responsible experience. Um, we created individual kits for everybody so that, so that instead of sharing sensory components, they all have their own one that we all work. Um, and then we realized that we were debating execution of that one so much that we were in crisis. And the crisis was going to hit really, really fast. Um, and so Hillary suggested we need to get something online and we need to get presentations and get an event going online quickly. So the next day, Sunday, March 15th, at about 5 p.m., she said, let's go live with a cocktail series. And I didn't expect them to say yes. Honestly, I didn't. Uh, I said, let's do it tonight. Uh, we were going to do it in about two hours. So I announced it two hours in advance mm -hmm. and decided we were going to do live streaming on, we did initially Facebook and Instagram and eventually ended up in Facebook Instagram, and Twitter. Um, I put the, the recorded video on YouTube as well, but um, it kind of evolved from there, but literally March 15th, 7 p.m., we changed it to 9 p.m. eventually, actually it's probably the next night, 
Um, and we immediately got into this. We were like, mm -hmm. okay, what can we do that's content? Can't do a bourbon tasting on short notice like this. Mm -hmm. Let's do a cocktail. What, what does everybody need right now? Everybody needs a cocktail. And we started our, our crazy cabin fever cocktail series knowing that people are at home, ingredients. what are we going to make that's going to work for them, that's going to be fun and engaging. Uh, we didn't know what shopping was going to look like, we didn't know what any of those pieces were when we got started. So we said, how do we make something that is a presentation, that is an event, we'll talk about this later, but um, we'll make it uh, something that um, our current fan base and we can grow our fan base um, would uh, resonate with. Um, and it forced us immediately to change our business operations. So the big piece of conquering this function was working through the logistics of what it was going to take to make this work well. Um, so just, it, I think the concept was get started. Just get started yeah. with presentations. Pretty much. As fast as possible, we were like, okay, do this now. We can come back and we, we can iterate. Um, I knew I was going to be shoving this into our kitchen, which is, we're in the kitchen right now. Right. It's not an ideal space. It's not a studio. It's honestly not large enough. I'm actually doing a test at the same time of another camera, which would show you the uh, unclean dishes in the background. <laughs> so. Yeah, which is, you know, it's fine. It's behind the camera. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, and we've got a great backdrop. We've got the bourbon backdrop. So we, we evaluated a couple of locations and settled on this one very quickly. Um, and that was actually kind of getting us all the way to delivering essential responsibilities. Um, we had to figure out what, as an event company, a virtual event looked like without a template and without ever having done them before. We always did live. Um, so you can see there, this is the side view of what you're looking at right now. Um, we got the laptop set up. We got lighting in place. Uh, we experimented with a lot of different lighting techniques um, and, and figuring out what we could do uh, as serving bourbon tasting uh, as service, right? So our essentials for our business are the ability to provide education and information and entertainment. Um, the cocktail classes were free, but we needed to offer a service that was paid. So we figured out how to do um, these bourbon tasting. Um, and it, uh, it meant that we could still be in business functionally as an event. Not the same way, it's very different. Um, this setup that you see here, this was for um, about a 200 person virtual event that we did first week of April. So very quickly we were back online as an event company. Um, had we not had two weeks of experience, it wouldn't have been as professional. So we highly recommend getting started. We're gonna keep coming back to that theme. Um, even if it's not perfect at the beginning because you're gonna learn as you go. Um, so this is our minimum setup. This made it work. We got live, we got good. We were, we were back in business with this. Um, and, you know, one of the things that we have to look at as we went along was what, what is the essential of an event? We couldn't do all the things that we normally do live. So things had to be stripped out. Um, we couldn't provide aromatic kits. We couldn't provide culinary aids. Uh, we don't have a liquor license. Normally we look at the bar, restaurant, or caterer company to legally provide alcohol. Can't do any of that. So what do we do now? We have a supply. We send uh, lists of people to prepare for themselves what they're able to collect at home. Um, and all of those, uh, those items that I mentioned, um, we have downloadables. The tasting map that I have in front of me in that photo is a, a downloadable that allowed people to print out themselves and be able to follow along exactly the same way. So we brought it down to the bare minimum and figured out what would work for us. Um, and it meant moving some of that responsibility onto the participant which is a big piece of taking interactive presentations live. Um, there are, you know, pure lecture style, but as soon as you move into something that is sensory or something that's more engaging, um, you need to be able to prepare the attendee to come with something on their end. But it worked out beautifully. We got amazing, great responses. And people had a wonderful two hour long experience just with this kind of setup. We actually had one person who admitted at the very beginning, they, they said, 
I'm not a bourbon drinker. I'm here with a cocktail. I'm here for the experience. I'm just going to sit here and drink while you get, give the presentation. So we did have a couple people who were in that audience who, who were interested in, in the, the presentation, but um, had decided to just go with the cocktail <laughs> while they watched. Um, and the other piece to this was, I think we took, kept in mind that people might not be able to get 100% of the bourbons that were suggested on the list. So we made sure that the, 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 the flow of everything would still make sense if somebody got, I think, was it six, six bourbons? If they, yeah, got four, go if they got four or five bourbons instead of all six, but if they got all six, great. They could follow along with the whole thing too. Um, so there were some adjustments for that particular aspect of things too. So the key here was we got started we figured out what our essentials were. And then we started iterating and adapting those processes. So you can see this is a little bit further along. Now we get to really how much we transform this. So in day three versus day 19, you can see that screenshot there. Um, day three is not as good. <laughs> day three, I didn't have all the lighting right up. Day three, I was still just kind of, we were just kind of winging it. And I, had not, I don't think I had pulled out any of uh, my photography lights at that point. And I had not changed out the ceiling light either because I have color changing the ceiling light is in here now. Um, so we adjusted the color there. We've got uh, two uh, two uh, lights in, off to the side here and that kind of helped a lot with the quality. Um, we added another camera by day 10 just so that if we lost all of our live feed, we didn't lose everything. Because uh, at that time, everybody, all the musicians especially, were trying to get online, was stressing Facebook's live stream capabilities, especially at that time. Facebook kind of got a bit of control, so did YouTube and some other places, where you could, you could see people having more technical issues with just the, the, the live streaming aspect of things. Uh, that's kind of been worked out at this point on the Facebook kind of end. But I like to have a backup, and that was one of the things I learned, was we lost Facebook entirely one day and had no indication on the screen that we had actually lost Facebook. Um, so I set up an extra camera to do a high resolution video so that if something like that happened, I could still put it online afterwards. Mm -hmm. This is one of the things we learned as we were going along. So we started these, as we said, on very little preparational lead time, knowing that we needed to stay relevant, stay connected to our audience, um, provide valuable content, potentially grow our audience, um, and that this would become a library of evergreen content. Ultimately, it was picked up very quickly, picked up very quickly by Visit Lex, um, and they used it as part of their sharing Lexington, um, which is a promotion that's still running right now. We're glad to be involved with that. Um, but a big piece of switching to the new normal was the psychological jump of this is a professional presentation, right? So we're seeing a lot of people throw content at it. Um, we're seeing a lot of chats. We're seeing a lot of talking head videos just to get something out there. Um, and normally these come in two intentional forms. One is just information. There's, there's something of value, something topical, something relevant, um, or their entertainment, their marketing. Those are the two general categories that these things fall into. Um, ours are kind of a blend of both of those. Um, that's what, what our intent was. Um, but we're seeing, unfortunately, a lot of the presentations are people who are adapting to the new normal of the work office environment is now on a screen. And so their presentation just feels like a casual office meeting. We're, we're seeing a lot that don't have scripting. You can see our script. We, we decided in advance what this is going to look like. Or even bullet points, because mm -hmm. like just some, just some talking points, because a lot of people think of script and they kind of fumble over what they're going to talk about. I would be terrible if I were trying to like go off of something I have in memory right now. Um, but bullet points to kind of bring you back on topic, to have an idea of what is going to happen during the, you know, so that if you start rambling, kind of like I feel like I am right now, um, you, could, you could come back to the things that you know you wanted to express to people. Mm -hmm. And getting it back on brand. That was an important thing. We started out very casual because we were rushing it, uh, which was fine. That's what we needed to do in that moment. We needed to get started. That gave us the opportunity to, to look at it retrospectively and say, okay, 
we needed strong brand identity. We need to get the logo in there. Just print it out, piece of paper. That's actually half my first thing. Yeah. I, I, I will, that right. that is that was already sitting in my kitchen for other reasons. So it became the dominant feature that became my <laughs> my anchor of my screen. So I know what, what what's going on, and we know that that's always going to be included. It's a great watermark. Just FYI, quick tip: fast watermark. You don't have to do any editing. Um, we upgraded the lighting as we went along. We realized to get back on brand, part of my brand is the vest, the tie, the button down. Uh, we moved back to that. We moved back to that after day 19, which is like you don't see that there. Um, but we, we realized that the virtual presentation was part of the business. It's not the office meeting. It's not the casual. It's the formal, it's the precise now. But there, are, there is a place for chats. There is a place for um, maybe you know, we've seen some stuff with the master distillers just doing like Q&A, and those are slightly different. But when you have information that you want to communicate, knowing what that is, knowing what the value is going to be for the attendees and the guests, and knowing that it can be valuable both live and evergreen. Most people watching this, and you're watching this right now, you're probably not watching this live. And that was designed for it to be able to live online after the fact and create value for people even after we've done it live. Yeah. Um, so this was... So we looked at all sorts of things and we kept learning all sorts of things as we went along. So we're uh, distributed across all the major platforms. So we have lists of all the platforms. You actually have a device per platform, plus one more backup camera, as Hillary mentioned earlier. <laughs> There's a reason for that. Instagram does not have the ability to do, uh, uh, there's a R R T. I want to get the acronym wrong here, RTMP, which allows you to use one camera across multiple. Um, Instagram doesn't have that at all. I could come down one camera. I just haven't because I, I set, I started the setup the way I did, and I, it just made sense to continue at first speed. Yeah. So, we had our setup. We evolved it. We learned the technology limitations. One technology limitation. I don't remember which platform it is. I just get told because I'm the host. She's the producer. <laughs> um, keep it to 15 minutes for whatever platform. Well, the way we had the room initially set up, I have no idea how long I've been going. So we added a clock, huge, just an iPad, the clock app on it, stuck it in the back, so that I know how long we we're, we're into this very easily without moving too much away from the camera. So I'm still focused in it that way. Um, and once we started looking at chats, people getting engaged, we're getting questions. Um, if I was going too fast, or if I could clarify and read, I needed a second person. I needed a producer yeah. watching the chat and being able to answer those questions, putting out recipes, various things like that. So one of the things that we're recommending for professional presentations now that are done in the virtual is it's a two-person job uh, at a minimum. Um, you've got your host and somebody working the chat, especially when you get into bigger and bigger presentations. We have 200 people. We have a 1,000-person event coming up next week. Yep. You can do so certain things with five people. That's fairly simplistic. But when you start getting into 20 people that are all trying, even 20 people all trying to talk at once, becomes slightly problematic and sometimes they'll chat kind of take some of the pieces just automatically into the chat and with the, the camera set up this far away um, you can't really see what's going on there and we could potentially have another device but then he would uh, have a break in his presentation style and he'd have to be reading it to see if you know what was being said there was a chat between two people who know each other or something for him so having that extra person allows that person to kind of filter and say, okay, hey, Tim, there's a question about eggs, you know, in this cocktail, because mm -hmm. we did have a cocktail of eggs. Yeah, it's great. Um, it was really delicious. Uh, it was a sour, actually, um, which traditionally has egg white, which gives it a foamy character on top. So, um, and now we have that as our evergreen content, if you want to go look up. Like this kind of thing. So um, the other thing that came up here briefly is technical failures do happen, right? In a, in a, in a live event setting we know event professionals know what kinds of failures can happen and how to deal with them in the virtual we were doing we've done multiple events where one of the platforms just gave up the ghost right in the hilarious one we were doing where facebook gave it up quite early on unfortunately we caught it we yeah. just restarted 10 minutes late started yeah. over apologize to everybody said hey if you pop the first two minutes of content uh, we're just going to go over it again um, because that was the only way to create both a full experience for people who, who weren't able to, to arrive with us at the beginning uh, because of the Facebook failure, um, and also for it to be valuable as evergreen content later. So, so once we feel like we had really established 
professionalism. Um, the final piece of it was the prep. You can see on the ta our dining table there, um, we, it takes us a lot to set up the presentation the way that we're doing it. We needed to stack these. So some of our, our content um, is live. Some of our content is live plus evergreen and some of our content is pre-recorded. Um, I feel like we're back in studios in the 1960s. The TV shows we got the little on air and you have the, the recording going now. Um, so we did a we did two pre-recorded for promotions that were uh, for charities that we were working with, um, and one um, live video, all in the same setup. So in order, and they all had different components. They all had different props and tools. So we laid out literally every single thing you can see on the table there. Took it seriously, prepped as an event, getting out of that mindset that it's just the office casual through a screen. Now we're getting serious. We're going to make it work, and we're going to make it work well across all three of those recordings that we're going to do in the space of one evening. So at this point, I feel like finally, our, like, hey, we know what we're doing. We know how to be professional. We're, we're going to present well. We've gone from day three to day 19. Actually, we're a little bit further along now. Um, and finally, our, we have recognized we have transformed how we operate. Um, at this point, we could change our business to promoting this which is a big, big uh, pivot for us. Basically, I had two components here, too. You have a list that is bourbon tastings, which is what Tim has traditionally done mm -hmm. most of, most mm -hmm. of, and then cocktail classes. But we also had already a, a virtual cocktail class where mm -hmm. somebody, but he had a birthday party, mm -hmm. and they're in Texas. They would never have done this, you know, before, you know, before this, this right. whole, you know, scenario here. Um, but they wanted cocktails, and uh, so we did a cocktail class, basically. We did. So there's kind of two two tracks at this point. We kind of split it a little bit. Uh, bourbon tastings, which is what Tim has always done uh, for the last four years, longer with the longer, reserve. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, cocktails, which is kind of this component he's always been involved in. He's done restaurant, uh, you know, cocktail menu items and that sort of thing mm -hmm. for restaurants. But not, I don't know that you've ever done... Oh, Julep. Sorry. Yeah, from something, not like this. Yeah. The, the virtual requirements to stay relevant as an event company and as a presentation company had changed some of our content strategy. We made conscious decisions around that. What you're seeing on the slide there, that is a page that uh, Hillary put up on the Distilled Living website to promote our virtual events and to sell our virtual events. We're able to take inquiries, make sales, uh, make a virtual event happen. Um, this is something that I've seen a lot of presentation companies and event companies try to get themselves online and say, oh yeah, we can do this, we can do that, we can do whatever, trying to promote via Facebook, trying to promote via whatever other mechanism without making it clear to a potential client that they do this professionally. Yeah, yeah we can make this work for you, but that's not enough. We went out there and we said, yeah, we got this. We yeah. can be confident in our technology, um, in our professionalism, preparation, our scripting, you're going to have a great experience. And for an event company, that's really, really important. But presentations are the new normal virtual for everybody, for every industry. And unfortunately, too many times, as I've said before, we've seen people think that I'm at home. I've done a lot of Zoom calls today. I've done a lot of Microsoft team meeting video calls today. Another one where I'm presenting I'm going to do this chat. I'm going to have some, some talking points. Um, and it doesn't come across professionally. Um, and unfortunately, it's a psychological hurdle that I think really every industry needs to get over. Because um, when you are needing to communicate outward right now in a primarily virtual world, um, being in that I'm at home, um, I have a less than, than perfect setup. I, I'm not going to have to worry about my content, um, my bullet points, uh, those other things. Those, that can really trip you up from a business perspective or from any sort of organizational perspective. Nonprofits trying to get the word out of what they're doing. That's a presentation, not an informal chat. I don't, I don't want people to be scared at the same time. Mm -hmm. I want to point out here, there is a key here to just get started. Um, but you kind of have to have a goal. 
like one solid goal for what you're doing and why you're doing it. Not just because somebody told you to do a video. Um, right. For example, for us right here, our goal is to help you get better at the new normal of presentations that have gone virtual. So we've got a checklist for you uh, that we're going to provide uh, as a downloadable afterwards. So what we have learned by getting started much earlier, we want to impart that information to you to help you with your business, with your nonprofit, um, even being in government, right? So we've, we've changed the interface among all the different facets of society to this virtual world. When you're in a Zoom call it's that, that is replacing an office conference meeting, that's when, when you're communicating information that's going to create value to someone else that needs to be actionable and referenceable, then having a checklist like we've created for you becomes an important part of preparation and the design. And as Larry said, understanding what the point is. Um, if the, it's not enough just to have content and, and say, okay, we're having a chat with so-and-so. In our industry, we have the chats with the master distillers popping up all over the place. That's great. You're competing with Netflix. <laughs> like, like it needs to, I need to know that it's worth my time because if it's not worth my time, I'm not coming back. And what's unique about it too is another aspect to this. Mm -hmm. It's like you, there is engagement in those, yes. those interviews with the master distiller, but some of them are engaging where they have prep questions and some yes. of them are they're just chit chatting and it's kind of watching it as kind of eh. that's a great point. So so from from that industry, for example. Um, we might say, Master Distiller, guided tasting, uh, it's gonna be first look at a new product that's coming out. Yeah. That's topical, relevant, interesting. Our Master Distiller hanging out in this kitchen drinking a bourbon, there's no intent there. Um, it hasn't been planned. Presentations across the board, back to you. I can, come up, I can come up with so many ways that I can turn anything into good content. So when Tim said master distiller sitting there in the kitchen, I, I immediately went to my brain went to slow TV where you just stick a video on for hours on end, and that is the intended purpose of it. So I that's could probably true. convert that into something that made sense. But I would tell people that that's what it was yes. if I were doing that. Right. So what is the intent? Is the intent to be background content, foreground content, know what your strategy is, um, and be ready because the the bar is being raised um, by all the companies that are taking it seriously. And we hope that this content is valuable for you to get into that as well. We don't know what events are going to look like. There is no event reemergent strategy yet. Uh, we're still in early days. So getting good at virtual events, live events, understanding that there, there's a subtle distinction. It's kind of a gradient, but there's a distinction between kind of your conversational webinars um, and your, your casual, we're replacing the office, you know, conference meeting and water cooler conversation and things like that. Um, and getting when you need to be a professional presenter saying, okay, now I'm a professional presenter mode. Even if you're not normally a presenter, um, it's going to be a valuable skill. Um, it's going to be a valuable um, mindset, I think, for, for everybody for a while. Does that kind of wrap everything up? We go back to Bert for Q&A? I think so. I think we got there. Hey, Bert. <laughs> yes, I'm here, and it's one of those things you, you know, unmute. You try to do it a couple of times and it just doesn't take. So yes, this has been a very fascinating and I think we've all been up against this. Uh, and this uh, checklist that you have or, you know, kind of talk through is a download that we're providing uh, on our site. We'll get to an address for that later on uh, that people can come in. But it is, it is Q&A time. So are there other, um, are there other things that inquiring minds want to know? And if not here, if you're watching this recorded later, um, we'll have our content, uh, excuse me, our contact information available so you can reach out to us um, with questions uh, after the live. Do you think this is something that you might continue on uh, when we, when the uh, quote new normal time goes back to the old normal, hopefully? Uh, mm -hmm. do, you, do you think you might continue? Yeah. I think it's going to happen. We'll continue with this because I think that there's an opportunity there beyond uh, the current, you know, kind of crisis uh, and the fact that, like, you know, you don't have to travel for this. It reduces your overall expense. So I think it le leads to an opportunity to have events 
with people who wouldn't necessarily want to spend a half in flight. Which he has has to have events that he's thrown oh, yeah. out for. But there are it opens up additional opportunities there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's something we've been giving a lot of thought about. There events, tours, and travel, we're, we're still in the crisis phase, right? We don't know how many months, how many years before we, we're actually going to establish a solid new normal. So in that time period, there's going to be a, probably a lot of stop starts, a lot of, okay, we were able to open up a little bit more of the hospitality, okay, we're pulling it back, or it's going to be different in different places. So as long as that's going on, absolutely, we're going to have the, the virtual events uh, as an option. But um, as Hillary said, yeah, this has actually opened up a new revenue stream for us, um, which we did not have any inkling of before. Um, and now that it's going well, you know, as long as that market is in place, we'll continue. Good, thank you. I have a question about impact on your participant numbers. Are you seeing participants increase, decrease, or stay about the same? I've seen it fluctuate um, in terms of the live cocktails, and I think it's really a lot based on current mood, how exhausted people are. This is also one of the reasons we're, we're interested in doing it as evergreen, is because there are some nights we have 10 people on Facebook and five people on Instagram, and I don't know how many on Twitter, because sometimes I can't see that camera. Um, <laughs> and um, so it, it varies a lot, but then like, I think last night it was, two or three people during the live, but then I think immediately after about, what was it? Oh, I, tell, I, I just it tell them numbers at the end of the evening. Like, um, I think shortly after, within the hour after, I think we had like at least 46 mm -hmm. views, and I haven't looked at it today. So that was just on yesterday's video. Um, so it's just, it's really all over the place. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. Some of our videos are live videos with a handful of participants, but we'll see numbers into the several hundreds. Um, once we get it online, people have an opportunity to get to it on their own time. Yeah, uh, and, and it varies. Like, you yeah. know, we also have a lot higher numbers on the ones that were sh shared by VisitLex. So that's another yeah. point is that VisitLex was able to use that content, mm -hmm. and those have different stats. Um, and I haven't really de delved into the stats because we're doing good with what we've got right yeah. now. <laughs> we're satisfied with where we are. And there's a lot going on, so. Right, and so that brings up a great point. Um, so one of the things is, you know, having the intentionality and then communicating that, having a marketing plan in place um, with everybody with a phone, be having the ability to create content and have a live event, the, the competition now for the Mindshare uh, and for the, literally the total number of viewers is very, very high. So having partners, uh, having a marketing strategy, working through your existing base and expanding it out, all that is really, really important and keeping doing it. We did 19 days straight, I think, with a video we, every single day. I think we did 20, 20 to, or 19 or 20 oh days God. straight. We skipped one day to kind of retool to figure out what we wanted to do going forward. Mm -hmm. uh, did we do two days and then switch to Wednesday? That's something like that, yeah. Um, so we, we did two, two more days in a row, I think, and then we switched to every Wednesday at mm -hmm. 9 p.m. But we have been going every day the first day was 7 p.m., but after that, it was every day at 9 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time, and then we switched to Wednesdays. So uh, a schedule is actually also helpful yes. because people can get used to that schedule and know that you're going to be on um, if they're interested in all of your content. I think that there have been a couple where we've had increased interest because of the particular cocktail we're doing today. <laughs> so Absolutely. there's variabilities like that. You've got your subject matter, you've got, you know, do people love the bourbon, do they love the tennis presentation? There's all these little different pieces uh, to a single thing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, to be frank, I really also think that there are times where people are not, you know, they're just tired and mm -hmm. don't want to, have to have something else on their schedule, mm -hmm. and then they watch it afterwards. Uh, quite a bit, and, but I think the key was was getting that momentum at the beginning. We did so many, we learned how to get better at it, but then we also developed that relationship with the audience that they were gonna look for it, come back regularly, and then we could start pulling back as we were fighting competition with lots and lots of uh, organizations, celebrities, everybody throwing out free content out there. Our content, we have less of it, but it's more impactful for our time spend um, because we developed that, that initial momentum and we have the marketing in place for it. Yep. Great question. I really appreciate your focus on providing value to the people who are participating in your, in your content, that evergreen value and empathizing with the audience, kind of understanding where they're coming from. 
what, what are some ways that you are continuing the conversation after your events? How are you continuing to engage the folks who are participating in your sessions? Sometimes it's actually via chat. There, there are sometimes where um, somebody will ask something at the end of the um, live presentation that's a little bit like not part of that particular day. Uh, we've asked each time for people to give us ideas if they want something specific at, uh, answered. Uh, we did a haiku cocktail mm -hmm. based on somebody's request. Uh, somebody had a very specific question of how do you do a haiku bourbon in a cocktail? And some of those come in after the fact, some of them come in via Facebook uh, Messenger, some of them come in at the very end of the chat when I try to take them to the Facebook Messenger, it depends on, it depends on the particular conversation, but sometimes it's at the end of the live video, sometimes it's in Messenger, sometimes there's an email. Mm -hmm. Uh, one of the live events, he was, uh, the, the cocktail class he did, the virtual cocktail class he did, they asked him to do uh, Falerna, Falerna yeah. in so, a cocktail, which is not, not an ingredient we've ever used, and he hadn't used, so, um, but it was a request off of a, a basically a private party to do in the next uh, public event, so. Yeah. And that gives us continuity, um, and that helps build and maintain that relationship with the audience. Um, and when she says we, she means her, because <laughs> uh, I am not socially media adept. I know what my skills are. I'm usually um, behind the camera, absolutely. on the computer, not here. Uh, but, ha but it is even more important than it was before to keep that conversation going. Um, and so we're doing it through the content um, and through the, the communication channels. That's a really good question. Any additional? Hey, Tim, what, what software you got? So do you, like, for example, on this webinar, we use um, Zoom webinars, and then we broadcast from here to Facebook Live. What is, you might have mentioned this, but what is the forum that you guys are using? Do you just go live on Facebook and then record it, or what's your medium? So for the private parties, we're using Zoom, unless somebody has something already set up that they mm -hmm. want to use. We've actually kind of given a list of options that we have some at least some experience with so if somebody already has like their entire office on a particular platform we want to try to use that so that they're already familiar with it trying to instead of trying to throw people into that for the crazy cabin fever cocktails i literally am setting up far too many cameras um <laughs> because of that conversation i had about instagram and the fact that it it requires a camera on its own um so there are some services like Restream.io and some other things that allow you to do more than one channel at a time. You can do YouTube and Facebook at the same time, or YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter at the same time off of one device. Um, uh, that's only one of them. There are a couple of others. Um, I haven't done that yet because we started out with multiple cameras, and I really kind of have a system down where I just shove everything into the kitchen really fast <laughs> before we get started. So, but there is an extra camera in uh for high resolution in case of, uh, in case anything drops mm -hmm. uh, so there is one additional camera it's a canon uh rebel t6i i think so basically if you want to know the full setup it's a laptop doing facebook mm -hmm. it's an old iphone doing twitter it's my current iphone doing instagram and the canon t uh, canon rebel t t6i i think doing my backup high resolution um video uh, with, I think, a road mic most of the time, except sometimes I actually forget the road mic. Um, and that's important because um, we, because of the technology fail issues, uh, we want to have that redundancy, but also because the type of content that we produce, um, we get great response on Instagram. So business-focused content typically does not live as well on that platform. Okay. Um, and I've heard rumor that you can do some stuff on LinkedIn now, that doesn't make sense for the type of content that we're doing. LinkedIn's live streaming is, uh, I think, invite only, so you have to have a really massive audience to go there. Um, you can put recorded video, though, on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. um, we're also not doing YouTube initially uh, for live because we don't have a large um, following on that platform, and we can use that later for holding videos. Yeah. Eventually, we'll, we had never spent time there before this, building up an audience, and so it's been kind of our leave it, put some stuff there, mm -hmm. make sure that there's some content there, but it's not been a primary focus because that doesn't have a massive audience and I haven't focused on growing that. Right, but now it's probably the new normal, that's what we're doing. Yep. 
That's a good question. Additional questions? Does that wrap it up? I think we're a little bit over, but if we've got more questions, we can certainly do that. I do want to say thank you to uh, to Tim and Hillary today of being available, and hopefully we'll have some additional uh, content with you all. I think we've talked about some things down the road, so really looking forward to that. Uh, and this is a discussion series, so if there's somebody somebody you want to hear from or something you want to talk about, please let us know. You can email that to info at celerity.com. Uh, I realized during the, the presentation that I hadn't put the link. The link for the download uh, is actually celerity.com free resources. We'll make sure that that goes out um, in the follow-up email for this event, uh, if you were there, and we'll get it into the slides here. So thank you, Tim and Hillary. Again, this has been great. Uh, we, we really enjoy that. Next Thursday, uh, we are going to be uh, working with one another group in town, and that is the uh, Bluegrass Professional uh, Project Managers uh, group. And we're going to be doing a presentation about how to craft some of these tools to do re uh, remote meetings and remote project management and keep things moving at work. Uh, and so I'll be working with... Uh, Christy Weilige and several others uh, to pull together that presentation for next uh, Thursday. It will be from 12 to 1, so we look forward to having that time. Bud, anything you want to follow up with here before the end of the presentation? I just want to say thanks again to Tim and Hillary. This is great content, and uh, I would encourage everyone who's watching to check out distilledliving.com and fascinationdesign.com. These are businesses that do great work and uh, we want to continue partnering with each other to support us all through this difficult time. So thanks again. Thank you, Thank you all. Thank you.